Jesus is giving a parable based on what he said in verse 13. Watch therefore, for you know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Based on that statement, he's giving this parable. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. Understand that. He called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And he gave one five talents. Now, we don't know if it was silver or gold, but if it was gold, it would uh, equal to about $100,000. And uh, so whatever the value is, it, at that time, it was big. So he gave one five talents, and then he gave another two talents, and to another he gave one. The, the first question I, I have is, why didn't he give everybody five talents? Or everybody two? Or everybody one? The next phrase explains it. To every man according to his own ability. To every man according to his own ability. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made other five talents. He doubled. He doubled what God gave him. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two. These boys are doing good. They're investing what the Lord gave them. But we had one guy, verse 18, but he that had received the one talent went, he didn't just put it away, he went and digged a hole in the ground and he hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and Reckoned with them. And so he that received the five talents came and brought other five talents saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five. Behold, I have gained beside them five more. Here they are, ten. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will promote you. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You will have to wonder why some people have not entered into the joy of the Lord as yet. And he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you gave me two talents. Behold, I have gained the other two. And here, four talents. His Lord said unto them, well done, good and faithful servant. I was been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Now we come to the serious part, as we are, I'm going to emphasize. <laughs> because this is happening so, so, so seriously in the churches. <laughs> then, verse 24, he which had received. One talent. You wonder if this guy had gotten five, what he would have done. Just one. Just one talent. He came and said, Lord, look, look, look. I know you. Really? I know you are a hard man. And that word hard means hard-hearted. You are a tough, demanding boss. Is what he was saying. I know that. You're a hard man reaping where you have not sown. And gathering where you did not straw. Here's the problem. And I was afraid. I was afraid. Fear of failure is the reason why most people don't succeed. I'll say that again. Fear of failure, fear of launching out, fear of doing what God called you is the main reason why people don't succeed. And he said, I was afraid. 
And I went and I hid thy talent in the earth. It's safe, Lord. There you have it, it's thine. I didn't use it. I didn't spend it on myself. I just kept it secure for you. Here it is. He thought he would have been complimented. And Jesus was really, really tough. You know, we have a sweet Jesus. You know, we have a loving God. But do you also know that he requires from us certain things? And you will see. His Lord answered and said unto him, you wicked. Oh my gosh. Wicked. And lazy, slothful servant. Those are some hard words. Some servants are wicked and lazy. You knew that I reap where I didn't sow and where I gathered, I gather where I didn't straw. You should have. Say should have. You should have put my money, what I gave you, to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I would have received mine own with, with interest. This is rough, man. Take, therefore, the talent from him. Take away his gifting. And give it unto him that had the ten talents. You wonder why some people get more and more and more and more? For everyone that hath shall be given. And he that and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not, whatever little he has shall be taken away. He ain't finished yet. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is suggesting that some servants are going to go to hell. You give me my topic and let me run. There used to be a time, in some companies it still happens, in some companies it have changed. Well, you would get two or three weeks of vacation every year. And if you didn't use it, you can have it rolled over to the next year. And some people will roll it over for three or five years, and then they would take all the vacation at one time. Now, some companies have stopped that. They are saying that your vacation is for this year, and you must use it or you will lose it. That's my topic. Hit me my topic there, lie. Use it. See why I need my screen. Use it or lose it. That's what it should say there. If you don't use what God has given to you, you will lose it. And it will come with a high price. The theme is making more with what you have. God has given everybody some kind of talent. Something you have. You cannot stand before God and say, God, you never gave me anything. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Repentance. Every man, every woman in the church, in the body of Christ has a gift, has, a, has something to do. Everything in my body is functioning and has a part to play. It might be small, but it has to function. And, and, and the problem is many people want to be in the face of the body, but that's not the most important part of your body. Uh, uh, the best parts of the body are hidden inside. Your heart, your lungs, your kidney, your spleen, your stomach, your intestines, they are all inside here. Nobody sees them, but they're functioning. And that's what makes the church the church of power 
and glory when every member is functioning in what God have called them to do. Amen. So that's my theme, making more with what you have. The best investment that you can give is to give your life into the service of the Lord. And you don't have to be full-time. You don't have to leave your job. You, you are a full-time minister wherever you are. This thing about being full-time and don't have a job and you, you, then you can serve God is not true. You are a light. And you don't switch the light on and off. You are a continuous burning lamp. So you are, you are ministering all the time. And the big picture is this. The high penalty of neglect. The high penalty is of neglect. So my topic is. Use it or lose it. My theme is making more with what you have. And the big picture is the high penalty of neglect. And uh, wh why uh, people... Somebody said the cemetery is the richest place on earth. Why? Because people carry with them to the grave all their talents and all their skills and never bothered to develop somebody and invest into somebody else what skills God have given them. This is what the parable means, to invest. We, we, we're not talking about money here. We're talking about God's gifting to you. And how many people have you invested your life in? If you had five talents and you can do five ministries, have you invested your ministry into somebody else? Now, I can't boast, but it's evident, very evident here that I have invested myself in the next generation. We have raised up uh, preachers and, and worship leaders and, and people in finance who can take over the church. I can say, Lord, the talents that you have given me, I have invested it in others. And I don't care if they are better than me. That's not the point. The point is I am doing what God has called me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. You may only have two talents, but that is plenty. Because God gives according to what you can handle. Now, suppose you wear a size 6 shoe. And I give you a size 12. What are you going to do? <laughs> Put two foot in one. God gives you the right fit. He doesn't over gift you to the point that you are confused. Many people, I've taught the will of God for six months and more on the will of God. And some people still don't know what the will of God is for their life. If I were to ask you, what is your gift? Oh, pastor. Hmm, I really don't know. How come you don't know and you're a Christian for so many years and you don't know what God has called you to do? That's why it's not being done. Because you don't, you're not sure what God has called you to do. And I'm talking to the one talent people. You have one talent. And you say, well, Pastor, I think my talent is to pray. That's a beautiful talent. Probably one of the most precious and powerful talents is the one to pray. So let's, let's just stay here. Your talent is to pray. Have you been using it? There are three ways you can use that talent. Firstly, you pray for yourself and your family. You can't stop there. That is personal prayer. Jesus taught and asked and you shall receive. He's, the, the Greek word there is aiteo and it means to ask with boldness. Ask with boldness. Ask as a son, asking a father. So that talent, if you lack, it's your fault, James says. If we lack, it's our fault. Not because God can't give. It's because we've been praying wrong and asking wrongly. And so we want to consume it upon our lust. And you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. But the privilege of prayer is for you to ask for your own family, your own children, your own household. But you can't stop there. 
it goes on to the next level of praying, which is intercessory prayer, which is having prayed for yourself, you go and pray for somebody else. How many people do you pray for when the day comes? And this is, this is talent that you should be using every day. Pray without ceasing. There is no period specially uh, set aside for prayer, according to Paul. Pray without ceasing. He said, I mention you every day in my prayer. Hallelujah. When the poor man came at midnight, the parable, Jesus is saying, uh, a friend came to, his, to this man at midnight in his journey, and this man had nothing to offer his friend, and he was hungry and tired. So the poor friend, now these are three friends, eh? one who was traveling came to the poor friend who had nothing. But this friend had a rich friend. So he went to his friend at midnight and knocked on his door, knock, 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 knock. The guy said, I can't get up and give you. The man was persistent. He will not stop knocking. And Jesus said, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Don't give up on knocking on the door for somebody else. If you're praying for your son or your daughter or your family and you're praying for somebody else, keep on knocking. That door will open. God will hear you and God will answer you. Don't give up on your intercessory prayer. And this is what happened. The man finally got up and he didn't lend him. He said, let me three loaves, man. He gave him. All that he had need of. This is a great point. When you intercede for others, God not only meets their needs, but will also meet yours as well. That's the reward of intercessory prayer. So you have a talent, but are you using the talent properly? The third level of prayer would be spiritual warfare prayer. Many people don't understand that. Where you take on the devils. Where you bind up the demons. Where you cripple their power from invading your house and invading and attacking your church and your family. You have the power to bind the enemy and stop his advance again and again and again. I have given you power and authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means can harm you. That's his promise. That's the power you have. And that's just a one talent person. If prayer is your only talent, God bless you. Use it or lose it. I can go on with a few more things on one talent. Just to mention, I'm not going to bug you because some of you can sing. But you're giving Simon a hard time. So what are you going to do with the talent that God gave you because you can sing? You used to sing. You used to be in choirs. And what happened now? Well, I just don't like them kind of songs. You have excuse upon excuse upon excuse. Listen, the world is moving on. The church is changing. We are not tolerating worldliness. But we have to come to terms with what this generation is asking for. I would love if we can sing hymns every Sunday, but that's a disappearing thing. A new gen we want to encourage the, the new generation, and we have a mixture here. We have hymns and we have songs, and I'm happy that the mixture is working well, and you are understanding that. But in the next five or ten years, what is going to happen to worship? So if you have a talent to sing or to, to come up here, and that's the gift God gave you. Use it or you probably hid it. Go back in your closet. Find your, your singing clothes. And talk to Simon. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen somebody? Hallelujah. Maybe your talent is making people welcome and happy. Do you know that... Deeper life is known. When we used to have uh, members meeting every three months, we'd have 50 people joining the church. At least we had this three tables, three rows of tables here. And we would ask them, why have you decided to join Deeper Life? And 
almost all of them would say, and not one of them would say, Pastor, it was because of your preaching. And I was to get upset. <laughs> they all said, it's because of the love that we feel when we come in this place. Yeah. It's because of the appreciation. And I think every one of us have that gift of, of appreciating other people. Why be snobbish? Why be, uh, you know, selfishness is a terrible thing, you know. This lady was finding herself like this. And the neighbor next was getting some air. And this neighbor here was getting some of the air that she was fanning. So she decided not to do that. And this is how she started the fan. <laughs> You've got to share what God has given to you. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Okay, your talent may not be spiritual. But you can use a hammer. You can use a brush. For months now, I need the handrail out in the portable five to be painted. I just told Desmond, if I don't get anybody to paint it, I'm going to paint it myself. But why should I? Well, we have people who can do that. It would only take half an hour to paint that. The handrail is about half an hour's work. But the talent is hidden. Pastor, I am willing, but I don't have time. Nobody has time, let me tell you that. We have to make time. Everybody's busy. Everybody has things to do. But out of the 168 hours in the week, if you tithe properly in your salary and in everything else, and you tithe your time, you owe the Lord 16.8 hours every week, every, every, every day, sorry. No, no, every week. It's only 24 hours in the Okay. So if you tithe your time, you owe the Lord 16 hours a week. How much of that do you give to the Lord? So, one talent is the problem. Because one talent people don't think they have anything to contribute. What is my little gift? What is my little? I come here and I sweep the church. What is that? That is big in God's sight. Men may not approve you, but God is watching. And he who gave you the talent is expecting you to perform and do what he called you to do. Whether it's five talent, two or one, he expects you to do it. Look, I haven't moved the first page yet, you know, so. So he gave every man according to his ability. And he will give you according to what you can handle. And here's a problem. You may have one talent and you may envy the guy with five. And you may want to take his place. But that's not your place. You see, I have five fingers here. You see this little one? Or maybe this one is just to wear the ring. And if you take them individually, you point. Well, I'm not going to the next finger. So that's, that's now not. This finger is the th thumbs up. Pilots always gave that in the wars. Thumbs up, they're ready to fly. So, when you belong to the hand, why do you want the glory finger? Which is the glory finger? Why do you want the glory when you belong to the hand? I'll show you how important you are. You may think you're nobody. That's bad thinking. You're somebody, but you don't have to be proud and boast. Let's say this little finger got a big cut, a huge cut. It's probably three-quarter hanging. Pain, pain, pain. So the rest of the body say, listen. This hand says, you see me? Me, me didn't get caught. Me didn't get caught. That's your problem. The foot says, you see me? I ain't walking because 
I am good. If every member of the body forsakes this little member here, we are going to have chaos in the body. This finger is going to hurt. And then finally the whole body is going to hurt. So we, because you belong to the body, the rest of the body have to take care of that little member, that insignificant member who is hurting and who is bruised and damaged. Let us care one for another. Let us show love. No matter how small, they don't have titles. They don't preach. They don't call, they don't call reverend and doctor and so on, so on, so on. They sit in the congregation. They are God's children. They belong to the body of Christ and they're equally important in God's eyes as any member in the body because we're not talking about self-worth we're talking about giftings you are worth everything in God's sight so this guy went and hid and the question is and I'm going to wrap up here I'm going to ignore all of these notes don't hide what the Lord has given you even if you have a little just a little use it or lose it. He came back to them. And called them. It's reckoning time. Give me a report. Tell me what you have done with what I have given to you. The five guys said. I made five. The two guys said. I call them five guys. You ever been to five guys? They're very expensive. I don't go back there. Yeah, and the salt content is very high. They have four days salt in one sandwich. You got to read the ingredients. <laughs> so five guys made ten. Two guys made two. But one guy, he decided it was not worth his time. So the report time came. He gave his report. And as I emphasize in my reading, the Lord said, take this away from him. You're going to lose it if you don't use it. Now look at, let me, let me just call one person here and I hope he doesn't mind. Take Brother Z for example. You know Brother Z has a visual, visually handicapped. That doesn't stop him. That doesn't stop him. <laughs> visually handicapped. That doesn't stop him. He has a program on the radio. Every Saturday, singing and praising the Lord, and it's reaching people everywhere. Congratulations, Brother Z. Why am I saying that? Because he is not hiding his talent. And you don't have to have any big talent. Whatever God has deposited in your spirit, just smile. You don't know how powerful a smile is. If I go into any office, government place, or anywhere, a doctor's office, anywhere, and somebody smile at me, instead of having a frown, I feel good. You know why? A smile is a statement of acceptance. When you see me and you smile, that means you like me. <laughs> that means you accept me. But if you see me and you stay straight face and you turn your face attitude is shown in the face let us smile at least everybody can smile it costs nothing to smile as a matter of fact it's better on your facial muscles to smile they say it only takes uh, 60 muscles to smile and 84 to frown that's why people get wrinkles they don't smile often okay so i'll wrap up now with five things that we learn from this one Success is a product of our work. You can't sit and your talent will multiply. You have to work. You have to get the muscles going. Secondly, God gives us everything we need to do the task. He never puts you in short supply. He doesn't tell you you're going to find ways and means to do what I call you to do. He gives you it. The third lesson. We are not all created with equal abilities. But we should be content with what God has given to us. The fourth lesson is, 
We work for the master and not for ourselves. We work to profit the kingdom. We work to profit the body. We work to profit the God's glory. Not ourselves. Let him do the commending. Let him give the compliments. Because the fifth lesson is we will be held accountable for everything God has given to us. And we have either misused it, refused to use it, hide it. This man did not lose it. He did not, he did not squander it. He did not pretend he didn't have one. He just buried it. And when you bury your talent, you're burying yourself with it. Because the Lord said, take it away from him. Not only he lost the talent, but he lost his soul. Cast him into outer darkness. I am not trying to make you guilty. I am just trying to awaken people with one talent who have put it to sleep and who think that we don't need you. God needs you. Whatever your talent is, maybe by be giving, maybe by be praying, maybe by be reading a psalm, maybe by sending a text. Take, take my brother, for example, see out there. Every day, that boy spent two to three hours to prepare a text. You see his name is Thibault. He sends that text to 100 and more people every morning. And some of you have been receiving them. He's, I asked him, why do you do that? Why do you spend three hours to make a text? He said, because I feel that's what God called me to do. And he does it without fanfare. Nobody would know it was him if I didn't say it. So you may just have a talent to send a text, call somebody and pray. That's a big thing we lack in deeper life is interconnection on the phone with prayer. Goodness gracious, call somebody every day and say, brother, I missed you. I am praying for you. Leave a voice message. Send a text. It's so easy. But we bury it because we think we have not put value on what God has put value on. That's the problem. We look at the five and the two, but the one, we condemn the one and say, ah, it's nothing. No, 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 no. The one, the one, the one is, the more, is in, 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 in more trouble than anybody else. So I'm not being hard on you. That's a pure word I've given to you. What I'm trying to do is awaken us who have one talent to function and to do what God has called you to do. Can I hear an amen? If you feel, if you feel this is the right word, can you say amen and give God the praise? Thank you, Jesus. I bless you, welcome you, we we'll love you. Let's work together because he's coming back and he's going to require from us. What have you done with the talents I gave you? Bless your name.